For once, it appears I didn't screw up on a car buy for a change. Really, I know, shocker. My 1985 Porsche 911 Carrera showed up mostly as described, and after a few repairs has been behaving itself. Really. And I have been driving it quite a bit, just because it is so fun to drive, but also I want to test it out to see if it's up for a cross-country trip to Monterey, California in about a month to celebrate 70 years of Porsche sports cars. 70 years of people buying these weird things. It's crazy. As I've gotten to know my first air-cooled Porsche, i found plenty of things to love about this sports car, totally understanding why people have been buying them for 70 years, but there are some things that bother me. Yeah. I covered a lot of stuff that I love in my previous post about this 911. Very important things like the interior smelling like a place that sells expensive horse saddles, or those leather stores that had a huge increase in sales after those Fifty Shades of Grey movies came out. You know what I'm talking about. I also describe how it's like Herbie the Love Bug, the part where it's alive. It's not like a Beetle, it actually drives like a proper sports car. For me, this 1985 911 is the perfect combination of old and new, as the basic design and mechanics of the car dates back to the birth of the 911, while it's new enough to still have the modern driving comforts that you need. Even though the ergonomics are a little weird, it's all there. I have a heater where some parts are here and some parts are controlled there. There's also a third spot to control the air conditioning three spots for the climate control. The radio is normal, but there are these weird knobs, and so is the sunroof. It's normal, except the switch is in a spot that looks like it belongs to a cheap aftermarket fog light or something, pretty much invisible. And it's over by the key, which is on the left side, because Porsche, and the seats are comfy and have plenty of adjustment. So even though it's a little on the weird side, it does the car thing really well. Now, I wanted to buy one of these because it makes me nostalgic. As my dad had several when I was a kid, but I also wanted a practical classic. I want a car that would still turn heads, like my Ferrari 355, except I need a back seat so I could take my family along on car-related trips. I also wanted something that was engaging to drive and comfortable, and stood a decent chance of actually making it to its destination. I know, a car that actually works as a car. Who knew? As far as classic European sports cars go, the 911 is the only car that I can think of that hits all of these boxes. It has all the practicality of a Beetle, along with the fun of, of a, a modified Beetle. And I'm doing a terrible job at this. Anyway, I'm also very happy with the overall condition of the car, as it's perfect for what I intend to use it for. Since it's already been repainted once, I don't have to worry about damaging it and ruining the originality. Also, since it has just over 100,000 miles on the odometer, I'm not going to depreciate it by adding several thousand more, since it's already considered high mileage. Despite its unoriginality and mileage, it's nice enough that I can still show it with pride at just about any car-related event. I do enjoy mixing with car people, including Porsche owners, but they're a very confused bunch. Not in that way, but with their orientation on pricing. Pricing. And that leads to something that I hate about this car. It was also a major theme in my opening video about it, how I feel everyone massively overpays for these cars at their current market prices including me. With shipping and repairs, I'm slightly over $40,000 into this car now, while just five years ago, I could have found one for half that. Now, I obsessively follow the commentary about me on here, on YouTube, as well on various automotive forums, or autotrader.com slash oversteer, article link below, but a lot of times I just Google myself, I Google Hoovy Idiot along with whatever car I bought, and it seems pretty evenly divided on if I actually overpaid. Many people believe these big Big sales numbers are a fad, a bubble that will burst, and I'm a moron for buying at the top, while another camp believes that buying an air-cooled 911 is safer than investing in gold. Now, I'm going for the gold one. Let's go for a ride. Yes. Come on here, come on. Oh, killed it. Now, to go into specifics that I don't like about this car, one major thing is the air conditioning. I'm kind of an AC snob, especially where I live. The Midwest summers are brutal, and this thing can barely keep up. The black interior sitting out in the sun for a couple hours, 
forget about it. The air conditioning will never be able to catch up and get you cool ever again. And this is despite me spending a thousand dollars fixing this system. Fresh R12, the old school Freon, a new blower motor, still not working very well. And that's how they were new. Now the seller told me the AC worked, just not very well, and it didn't work at all. But the rest of the car was as described, so I can give them a little bit of slack. As you can see, I'm melting, totally melting. Now, another thing about this Porsche that's weird is the clutch pedal. It's in a weird spot. It's kind of like an old pre-war car, the way the clutch pedal is attached to the floor rather than kind of hanging up underneath in the dashboard. And it has a weird feel. And when I drive my other manual transmission cars and then come back to this one, it's like I've totally forgotten how to drive a manual because it feels so different and I end up killing it like I did earlier or just chugging it along. It's really hard to drive well until you get used to it. <laughs> oh, what a noise, what a noise. It's great. Now, if I wanted modern air conditioning to where I wasn't sweating it up in here and I wanted a nice, easier clutch in a modern, shorter throwing gearbox, I could have got a modern car for what I paid for this thing, but I obviously didn't do that. No. Well, actually, I did do that. I bought the cheapest Porsche 911 in the country, that 99 911, but I kind of ruined it with the LS swap. Yeah. Bad decisions. And obviously, this car is a lot more attractive than a 996, especially my early one. A lot of people knock the impact bumper 911s, but personally I think they're beautiful, especially when you consider how other companies didn't do a very good job with those impact bumpers, like Mercedes with their park benches, BMW to a lesser extent. And this one's integrated really well. And I almost used it to rear in this Infinity. Yeah, it sounds good, but it isn't the fastest, that's for sure. I know one way that would make it a lot faster. I do have a little little experience with this as well. Hmm. Hmm. Ugh. Now, hold your horses. Don't start feverishly typing yet, as I promise not to LS swap this. But the service costs do concern me a tad. The air-cooled motors aren't known for being the most durable and they're really expensive to rebuild. The minimum cost is $10,000. Now, the reason for this huge expense is mostly because of the ridiculous parts prices, which is a theme throughout the car. But it's a pretty engine. Yeah, very pretty. Oh, I kinda need a belt. Uh-oh. Yeah, I need an AC belt, badly. Let me give you another example of these crazy parts prices. I needed to replace my blower motor as well as recharge my AC system to regain my marginal cabin cooling. And that part alone was $900. I googled around and that's how much it really is. It's not like the car wizards out to screw me. I certainly wasn't going to spend that much, so I sourced a used one out of a salvage yard for only $200. It makes sense for things to be expensive on my rare old Ferrari, for example, but these old Porsches weren't that expensive new. I mean, they were kind of expensive, but not bad, and they made tons of them. It doesn't compute to me why the parts are so expensive. So I do have some concerns with air-cooled Porsche ownership, but these were all things that I mostly knew going in, and they obviously didn't stop me from buying one, but that's not saying much because I can talk myself into buying anything, as you know. Although for now, the loves certainly outweigh the hates, but I still sometimes think about how much performance I could have bought with the $40,000 that I spent on this car. I spent it on a 200 horsepower cousin of a Volkswagen Beetle. Now, I'll probably be thinking about this a lot more when this old thing inevitably leaves me stranded somewhere. Thank you for watching. Uh, 31 years old and I'm still, still have acne. Fantastic. I needed to replace the blower motor inside the car as well as recharge my AC to ring gain. <clears throat> Walking and talking. Walking and talking is challenging. All right, all right, okay. Now, let me give you another example of these crazy parts prices. I needed to, what, but walking and talking. Walking and talking, why are we walking and talking? Walking and talking is very hard. All right, let's try this again. And I have to do a motion of closing the hood and walking and talking. 
three things at once. Old ticker doesn't do that very well. All right.